What's up? Nothing. You could just swipe down and then just like, and then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could have done what I did any faster, but thanks, Jake. <laughs> I am older, but I'm not. Okay. You're not faster. <laughs> so this this one's nice, right? Start with. Yeah. So hopefully nobody had trouble with this. What do you end up with? Oh, two. Yeah. Cool. This guy. What's like? Any like terms for this? Nothing. The the X Y the. Yeah, right there. Anybody with this guy? Um, no. Six two. And then this poor guy's left out, right? So see what I'm doing there? I mean, the little thing I do is I underline them in different shaped underlines. So I don't have to move anything around. Mm -hmm. So five of these minus eight of them is negative three of them. Right. And then negative two and minus six, negative eight of them. And then the plus four y is all by himself. Aw. Cool. And then here, any like terms with this guy? No. This guy? Yes. And this guy? No. So six of these, five of these, 11 of these, and then you got the plus 5w and the minus 3 just sort of hanging out there. Nobody to go with at all. Cool. Not too bad. Okay. Hey, real quick example that really trips people up before we do these. Um, I had 4cd minus 2d squared plus... 5dc uh, minus 8cd. Who's like terms with this guy? And the 5. And this guy. Right. I know, I know. D times C is the same thing as C times D. Somebody just, somebody mm -hmm. just wrote it out of order. Right? So how many C's does this guy have? One. How many D's? One. So any like terms has to have one C and one D. It's got to have the same letters and the same amount of each letter. So these three have a C and a D. So I can put them all together. I could rewrite that as 5CD. Okay. So I remember one semester early on in my teaching career, so I was a little bit, I didn't know what to do with this. She just would not believe that DC <laughs> was the same thing as CD. No, I will never forget her. <laughs> What's her name? So we, we talked after class and I finally convinced uh, her, I think her name was Jack. No, Jack. Um, but everybody here is cool with that, right? You're going to be another person I'll never forget. Okay. That's wrong. That's true. All right, I, I understand. So you get, if you get 9 minus 8. So then you get the 1. You get 1 C. Yeah. CD. And then, of course, poor little 2D D squared is just by himself. Uh -huh. I mean, okay. I can see how she could argue that. But it wouldn't even make sense to argue. Cause this yeah, because it would be like 3 times 8 and, and 8 times 3. Are those different? I mean, they are different. Order. But they see, math the looks at this. Math says, okay, the number 24, there's all different ways to write 24. 2 plus 12 is 20. Not 2 plus 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. <laughs> uh, 48 divided by 2 is 24. Right, so forth. Mm -hmm. Right. So these are the same thing. And of course, Commutivity, all that kind of stuff. Cool. Okay. So what about these guys? Okay, so 15. Yeah, so you get 15 W. Minus 10. Minus 10 N. Cool. Please, dear God, you do not have to show all the stuff we did earlier. Like, that's not showing your work. This is showing your work. Bam. Uh, now this one, people do the wrong thing. We haven't talked about something called FOIL method, people sometimes would FOIL it. What's the only thing, the only things multiplying in this next dude? The three. The three and this the, guy. Yeah. So I wouldn't start doing 2x times 2, right? Do you guys see that? I mean, most of you guys should know FOIL method. Uh, but this is just 3 times this. So it's the 2x just sitting here, and then 3 times 2, 6, and then 3 times negative x. Mm -hmm. Negative 3x. Yeah. And then you can put together the x's and you get five. Negative. Negative. Oh. Negative one x negative, yeah. plus six. 
Negative 1. But if you write it the other way. 6 minus x? 6 minus Sure, of course. As long as the 6 is positive and the x is negative, you can write it either way you want. I like it. Now, the last guy has got one of the most common mistakes that you can make. So the first piece normally people are cool with, 3a plus 6b. This is the part that trips people up. What are you distributing? A negative 2. Negative 2. Oh. If you don't believe me, you could rewrite this as plus a negative, right? Mm -hmm. So you really are, but this, I mean, minus is negative, to be honest. The subtraction operation is a negative. So negative 2 times 2a minus 4a. Negative 2 times negative 5b. Positive 10b. Because negative times negative is positive. So it's a really easy mistake to make. Just be careful about those negatives. I didn't realize that, but I still wrote it down. That's right. Oh, freaky. So part of your brain is looking out for you. <laughs> so what are we getting here? We get 3a minus 4a. So you get a. Negative a. Right. Because there's more negative. negative. Yeah. And then 6b plus 10b. 16. Plus 16b. Or you could write 16b minus a. Either way. Yes, ma'am. So on the numbers you use, how do you put the 11s that you were Oh, first? yeah. Even though it was like further down, did it matter? Oh, again, again, I, I sort of, sometimes I'll just go right into putting it, especially with these, this is like a trinomial. Mm -hmm. And you normally immediately put it in descending order because the next thing you might try to do is to try to factor it, right? So as a math geek, that just sort of is built into me sometimes to do that. But it really doesn't matter the order. I mean, when I grade things, I'm just going to make sure somewhere there's a negative 3, somewhere there's a positive 5w, and somewhere there's a positive 11w squared. So you could write, how did you write this? 5 negative 3 plus 11 squared. I love it. Or you could write 5w minus 3 plus 11w squared, or you could write negative 3. Yeah. I'm with you. I don't blame you. Uh, but you might, well, when we get to factoring, you'll see why descending order is the good way to go, because it keeps you tra in, uh, on track as to what form it's in more often. Yeah, cool. Okay, so any questions on that? I, we'll do that a little quickly, because that's some skill you're supposed to come into this course with already, and we've done a bit of this before. Um, so what about the back side of this? The meat and potatoes of math is solving equations. Some of you guys might realize uh, very soon after you talk about solving equations, you do the thing that all students love the most, which is word problems, right? I love it, I love it. That's just been given such a bad rap. Some stupid train leaves Wyoming going south. <laughs> you know, I don't blame you too much because some of them are so contrived. I, I don't, again, I don't blame you that much. But, for example, if there's a, here's the Earth and there's a asteroid coming, right? And we have a big enough missile that'll blow it up because, you know, Bruce Willis isn't available. He's gotten way too old to go up there. Uh... There's an equation that describes the motion of this asteroid, right? There's an equation. And if I shoot a rocket, there's an equation that governs its motion, right? So what I want to do is I want to make this equation equal this equation right there. So that what happens, it'll blow the damn thing up. So if I don't know how to set up freaking equations and I don't know how to solve them, uh, we're dead. Yay, us. Go humans. So we've come a long ways. So we should be able to protect ourselves. Using math. Without math, we just start, you know, just throw them all up there. Oh my God, just keep throwing all this shit we're doing. All right? Something's going to work. No, okay. We're done. Oh, we're done math. <laughs> <laughs> math saving the world. You know, that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, I, well, I, I, let me see. So if you're an astronaut, you're supposed to know a lot of math, right? Oh, yeah. Um, if you've ever watched Apollo 13? No. You should. <laughs> Not just because it's got math in it, but because it's a good movie. Has anybody ever watched Apollo 13 with... Uh, Bruce oh my gosh, Adam. really? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is in it. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, is it Paul? Paul? Yeah. 
Bill Paxson's in it. Somebody else. <laughs> was uh, Sinise. Ed? What's his Sinise. name? Huh? What's his face? Sinise. Gary Sinise. Oh uh, yeah, Gary Sinise. Holy know. shit! And you guys are all like, huh? It's probably some old actor people, whatever. So I grew up in Silverton, and um, Don Pettit is an astronaut, and he was from Silverton. Yeah, there you go. I love it. And yeah. He's a small guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, Holy shit. But on the, you know, they're doing on the fly these calculations about their velocity so that they won't, you know, die as they try to re enter Earth's atmosphere. So they have to sit there and do the calculations. They better know their freaking math or else they're dead. You know, so that's you know well, math is well. And of course I love it. Some student will be like, Well, I'm never gonna be up in a spin I'm like, Well, yeah, if you don't know math, you ain't. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm not even sure where to start with this is Equations are so fundamental to math that all of you should have been exposed to them to some degree already. It's just a question of how much you're... Let's start off really, really, really basic. So the idea is I'm trying to undo what somebody did to the x. So somebody took x and multiplied it by 7, that dork, right? So if I undo that multiplication by 7, of course, how do I undo multiplication? I use division. So solving equations is all about opposite operations, right? Do the opposite thing to the equation. So then you end up with x, I'm going to be really, really equals 4. I like that. Now I am, and now the students are so mean to themselves, and then they blame the teacher. My God, keep yourself organized so you know where things are. Things just sort of float to the other side on their own if you're not careful. <laughs> right? And that's not math's fault, it's just you not write it down right. So I need to see this work. Don't, don't do this equation like this. That you'll lose a lot of points for. What is that? Do you guys see what happened here? That's the right answer, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't see any algebra. I don't see any algebra. And don't say, there's an x. No, that's not algebra. This is an equation. I don't see any algebra that was done to solve that equation, right? But it's different. So the right answer. Yes, but why am I trying to get you used to algebra right now? Because the equations are not always going to be something you can just look at and see. So my, my standard uh, example is if you were in driving class, driver's ed, right? And the, driver, and the guy said, your first test is to drive to the mall. Call me when you're there. So, you drive, so you're supposed to drive to the mall. So I walk to the mall, get to the mall, I'm like, I'm here, man. No problem. And he's like, did you drive there? Your car's still here. No, I walked here, man. I'm here. I'm at the mall. That's what you wanted me to do. You wanted me to be at the mall. I'm at the mall. What's your problem? Uh, this is driving class, right? The, so, I mean, isn't that silly? But this is algebra class. If you don't use algebra to achieve the result, you are going to lose most, if not all, the points because it's just as silly as walking when you're in driving freaking class. It's just as silly. So when we get to the word problem section, do not get upset at me if you get the right answer, but you didn't do any algebra work. I don't care. The word problems are going to be simple enough that you can think about them and see what the answer is supposed to be so that when you set the equation up, you know what to expect. Right? So I know there's multiple ways to solve problems. There's multiple ways to get to the mall. Right? You could take the trial. You could get somebody else to take you. You could walk there. You could just live there. Right? And you're like, I'm always at the mall. I'm here, buddy. <laughs> Test pass. No, is it right? Okay, maybe you guys get the point. So, I mean, of course, if I had this, uh, yeah. So, X, somebody took 11 away from it. I'm going to add 11 back to it so that I can see what X was. And then if you check it, 13 minus 11 is 2. Check. Thank God. Let's get a little more interesting equation going on. How about this guy? Uh, sure. 
right, that's, that's quite a bit more interesting, but I want to take a big step to see where we really are. So why were these so relatively easy? Because all the X's were already together, and they were really just one operation away from having X by itself, right? So what's the first thing I just said that's not true here? All my X's are just spread to the winds. Holy shit. So the first thing you do is you look at both sides as simplification problems, right? So this side, can you do anything with it? No. You can't add X and 21. But this side, what can you do? Add X's. Yeah. So I got 3X and 2X. 5X. 5X's, I like it. Now, it's really just two steps away from looking like this. If I can get my x's all on one side and my numbers all on the other side. So you can add 7 and minus x. Yeah, beautiful, right? right. So uh, a really smart idea is to subtract x so the x's stay positive because negatives always find a way to screw us up. So minus x minus x. And let me see if you guys can handle it. Yeah, at the same time, I can add 7 so the numbers go the other side. Some teachers teach to do all this on one line, and I understand why they're technically more correct, but screw it. This is my, I can see what the hell I just did. Mm -hmm. When I go back to look at my homework, I'm like, I see what I did. If you put it all in one line, right, you put the minus x here, and oh my god, you're like, what was there before, and what did I do? <laughs> screw that shit. Right. Uh, so here you get 4x. 4x. This is gone. There's the equal sign. That's gone, right? Mm -hmm. 28. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. Divide by 4. That is equal. And then, of course, you can plug it back in and make sure that both sides are equal. Right? When you check your work, you've got to plug it into the original because the first thing you did could have been a mistake. So don't plug it in like here and say, oh, it looks good. No, you've got to plug it in way back there to the original. All right, how are we feeling? Are we feeling pretty good about that? Okay, so I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I've already got a collection of problems. Go ahead and try those problems out on that back side, the one about solving equations. Call me over if you need some help. Work with people near you if you need help. Did you get You got one of these, Maddie? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, you did already. All right, just hang out. By office mate in the room next door. What are you doing? Kind of chiding her students. You're supposed to multiply the exponents. So, I just do that. We have another lecture going on. Again. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. <laughs>